Okay, thank you very much. So just a few more words about me. I, I work uh, actually as it it was uh, taught at the Faculty of Journalism, Information and Book Studies at the University of Warsaw. It's quite a new faculty because we um, joined uh, two different departments, joined to make the one faculty, Department of Journalism and Department of Information and Book Studies. So we, uh, we uh, joined together uh, and to focus on communication studies, on communication uh, science as a kind of discipline in a more, more broad way. So I, uh, that's why uh, I am also engaged in this, I was engaged in this formal project, uh, although uh, originally I come from the LIS Library and Information Science uh, discipline, but we cooperate with our colleagues in media studies so we can uh, join and uh, enjoy uh, our uh, knowledge and expand our knowledge together. And today I want to, to share with you some results of, of our project on uh, FOMO, on fear of missing out. I will share my screen. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, I hope it works. And as you can see, I will try to discuss uh, relations between uh, FOMO and uh, some other topics, uh, which we I both, uh, which we all I hope are interested in, which are information literacy, digital well-being, and information overload. Um, this is uh, this is. Uh, based on the project which started in 2018. And so far we had four editions, four waves. I don't know if we will continue, so I cannot promise you the next results, uh, but so far I think we have enough data to share and to analyze in different aspects. And um, this, this presentation is about only a few aspects, but there are many, many uh, other uh, data. Uh, okay. Uh, I think I briefly uh, discussed the agenda, what I want to say, and just let's go to, to, the, to the topic. Uh, the first part uh, will be uh, focused on information literacy and digital well-being or digital literacy, let's say. Um, and uh, this, uh, these issues will be related to FOMO. Because the project we started uh, and we we ran uh, was actually focused on FOMO. Uh, I mean, the FOMO was the the main fundamental part of the survey of the questionnaire, which has been uh, available ev uh, online for our. Malgorzata, I'm I'm very sorry, but can you? Put your um, presentation on full screen because we still we still see your um, I PowerPoint, did it, PowerPoint uh, inter interface. Okay, can't you see? So if you can see, then I because I went to the the presentation mode. I don't know why it uh, maybe okay maybe now. Uh, yeah, we we still see the first slide. So. Only. Okay. Yes, just the first one. Okay, so let's go like this. <laughs> okay, yeah. No, I no, hope no, it will no. work. <laughs> so the agenda is uh, is done, and okay. let's start the theoretical background and some uh, introduction. Uh, so as I said, the project is was focused on FOMO, on the this uh, problem with uh, uh, internet in general and social media in particular, and how we use it. Uh, how our society, how our, how we are using it, and what are the consequences of of problematic internet use? Uh, the questionnaire was for each of these four times, four waves. The questionnaire was quite long and consisted of some other uh, scales, some other uh, questionnaires or sub questionnaires, which was were were related to. Uh, different topics like uh, fabbing, for example, or nomophobia, or um, kind of uh, self-marketing or self-promotion promotion in the internet. And the, 
different scales were used in different ways. So I cannot um, discuss, for example, the, the issue of digital well-being in all four ways, because we used this scale only in the first two. And the, the scale of for information overload was used only in two, the last two waves. So that's why I, I will present you only parts of this uh, of this whole uh, project results, partial results. And um, the question is, uh, if the FOMO is our most interesting topic, the, the, the one which we focus on, the question is if these different problems with internet usage are somehow related to FOMO and are, is there any relation of, for example, information literacy to FOMO? Uh, are uh, those people with high FOMO results, are they information literate or not? Maybe we can, the, the, the intuition is that they are lacking these skills, yes? We will see if it's true or not. And the same uh, is with digital well-being, for example, well, uh, we, we can, again, we can think that, we can, we can hypothesize that uh, people with high FOMO results are, have some problems with the digital well-being. They cannot take care of themselves in this regard. We'll see if it is true or not. The basic definition the FOMO definition is offered by uh, Andrew Przybylski and his team, uh, and they are the authors of the original scale, which uh, so far has been used in very many uh, projects all over the world, more or less. <laughs> uh, and uh, in its uh, original version, the FOMO scale in original version and in some adaptations to different languages or different specific topics, spe specific research problems. So, so some authors, for example, used only a few questions from this scale or make them longer, depending on, on the research problem. However, FOMO is defined as a pervasive, pervasive apprehension that others might be having rewarding experiences from which one is absent. Uh, it's originally, it does not refer to social networking only, but in most of the, 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 the research, it actually does. And we also uh, interpret FOMO mostly in regards to, to social networking and to internet usage. And the, the fear that if we are not uh, present in the virtuality, then we are uh, lacking something. Yes, we don't know what is going on with our friends and our colleagues and the family and the world in general. Information literacy, uh, for sure, for for the research purposes, uh, in particular for quantitative studies, it is usually defined by this uh, information skills, the list of the skills, how to uh, define information need, how to uh, select, uh, find, select and evaluate and use information. Yes, this is uh, uh, operationalized definition very often used in, in quantitative studies because it is much easier to, to uh, calculate the results and to uh, clearly uh, show uh, what people can do and what people cannot do. However, I uh, personally, I like uh, much more the, the, this definition, which you can see, uh, which is, uh, I think, uh, a step forward. Yes, the thinking about information literacy, not only as a set of skills, which is of course true, uh, but also as a um, condition uh, uh, specific condition uh, which is indispensable to live in our uh, information uh, or network at, uh, networked society. Digital well-being and digital well-being skills are, uh, of course, um, phenomena or, again, a set of skills which are perceived as indispensable due to the risks we 
are facing in the virtual uh, world. Yes, that we uh, can, we can suffer from some uh, difficulties when we are uh, too much engaged in digital life. Uh, if we uh, discuss relations between information literacy and digital literacy or digital well-being, we can refer, for example, to the to the list of these compet six competency areas as proposed by GISC, which is a non-profit uh, organization, uh, British non-profit organization, one of, I think, many others which are engaged in research and education and promotion of digital well-being and digital skills. And you can see that second uh, of these competencies is related to information, information data and media lit literacy. I think it's not possible, or at least it's not very easy to determine clearly what is digital skill or digital literacy and what is information literacy. It's very, they have so many, so much in common, but, uh, Generally, it's uh, digital well-being can be discussed as or perceived as a either a competency or an outcome of digital literacy, um, including uh, these uh, functional skills, critical use, creative production, participation, development, and uh, self-actualizing, which is. Uh, presenting or defining uh, one's digital identity and uh, well-being. In this very first part of, of my presentation, I want to focus uh, on information literacy and digital well-being, and I want to find out or to show you if information literacy is somehow associated with FOMO and how, if, uh, if it is, then how. Uh, are high form of people information literate or, or not? Are, is there any relation between being information literate and uh, problematic internet use and uh, this, kind, uh, this kind of topics? So just to uh, briefly present the methodology, the study, the, the survey was carried out, was conducted in uh, Poland uh, and this first results are from the two from two first waves for 2018 and 2019. The next two I will uh, uh, return to this uh, were, were carried out in 2021 and 22. So in 2020, as in many other projects, also uh, we did not run this project because it was the pandemic time and it was very difficult. You can find some results uh, at the website. They are in Polish, but I hope it's not that difficult for us to, to understand each other. Um, and the, 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 the project uh, was uh, a quantitative one. It was an uh, online survey. Uh, on a representative sample of Polish internet users age 15 years and older. So there is a bottom line, let's say, uh, starting from 15 years old and no uh, upper uh, limit for the respondents. The, uh, this representativeness is for sex, age, size of the place of residence, uh, the, the most popular, most important, let's say, uh, social demographical um, features, characteristics. And we cooperated in this uh, project with a uh, research panel called Ariadna in Poland, which is specialized in, uh, in online uh, surveys, yes, in online um, uh, public opinion uh, researchers. Uh, and as I Previously taught, the, the survey uh, consisted of the FOMO scale and some other scales too. Actually, there was no uh, direct scale referred to information literacy, but we tried to, uh, when we got get the results, we, we, we started to think, well, 
is it possible to find any questions which would show us the information literacy level of our respondents and how can we describe their information literacy maybe indirect indirectly yes not directly with direct questions but indirectly and we did it and i will show you just in a, a while how we did it but uh, general results uh, we can see maybe like this uh, these four waves uh, the, the yellow one uh, yellow results are for uh, people with uh, high FOMO indicator uh, the, the gray one in the middle uh, people with mid FOMO result let's say and the lighter gray is for uh, low FOMO people there actually there were there was no people with no FOMO <laughs> Uh, results uh, because uh, the, the scale consists of uh, 10 questions as far as I remember and uh, everyone answered at least one of them yes so everyone is somewhere in this you can find uh, him or herself some way uh, in these results and these are results by uh, age uh, as you can see uh, the General, generally, the high form of people uh, makes uh, made 16 and 14 percent of the respondents in the first and second wave, respectively. It's not well. We can say it's not very, very many. But uh, if we think think about the problems which are associated with FOMO, it's quite large group. Um, and uh, of course, this with people with mid FOMO uh, uh, or low FOMO, they somehow also suffer from this uh, from this problem. Uh, so these are the results, uh, just only FOMO scale results for these two waves, just to compare the next two waves. And you can see that after uh, the pandemic time, as we can hypothesize yes after this time that this uh, FOMO indicator is much higher than uh, in the first two waves uh, and it is much higher it it, uh, it it is higher for the younger groups from 15 to let's say 34 the first three um, uh, groups uh, in the last maybe it's yes the same it's the, it's uh, also from 15 to oh, maybe 44 uh, this one but uh, for 221 uh, it's really a bigger problem than uh, than before questions which questions we found uh, and interpreted as uh, related to information literacy or presenting some kind of information uh, skills? The first one, as you can see, what um, uh, said, what forms of content do you publish on your social media profiles? Because we thought that uh, uh, formal competences or ICT competences is are strongly re related to information literacy yes we can um, uh, be more flexible or more efficient in using information uh, if we are uh, if we are skilled with different uh, types of or forms of content we can uh, publish uh, texts but not only texts also uh, photos or live transmissions or previously re recorded films and, and as you can see people uh, with uh, we, we call them formers uh, yes these people with uh, high former result results uh, the formers are much more uh, experienced uh, in um, sharing different forms forms of content not only texts but also those let's say more difficult, uh, uh, more uh, specific forms of, uh, of content. Um, okay. Uh, 
they are also, let's say, more engaged and more diverse, uh, use more, uh, more engaged and more active in uh, uh, using social media for different goals, not only, for example, uh, for um, searching for news or uh, just for uh, relax and ent entertainment, which goals are the most popular among also the other two groups, people with mid or low FOMO, but they also use social media for very different, uh, other different goals. So this diversification can also and I, indirectly um, illustrate their uh, their competencies, their skills, their, um, for example, searching skills. Yes, they can find different forms of or different types of content of information or, or other uh, content uh, for, for different purposes, for different uh, goals. Next uh, question. Uh, related to information literacy is about running different activities on social media. Uh, only, for example, liking or commenting, which are uh, more popular, accepting as a someone as a friend, yes, the most popular uh, type of activity in social media, but also um, running one uh, on profile or um, observing rules uh, of content management, which is which requires some uh, knowledge and uh, awareness that this, uh, what are these rules and where we can find it, uh, and uh, the specific attention or care give, given to how we write our opinions or reviews. Yes, what, what is its form, what, how we express our opinions. And again, this is not direct information uh, literacy skill, but it uh, reveals some, uh, somehow our uh, efficiency, our, our uh, engagement and our uh, awareness and the uh, ability to make decisions to, to choose what to do, what not to do, uh, and how. Uh, uh, how wh what types and of activities we run and how we do it. Uh, as for digital well-being, there were some specific questions concerning digital well-being, so we can uh, refer to them now. The first one, do you try to keep healthy habits during your ICT and internet uh, usage? And what we have to start with now is that, or, or uh, discuss now that we have a questionnaire, so we have only declarations as uh, answers. And this, is, this can be uh, uh, mentioned as a, one of the limitations of this study, that we have declarations, so uh, people usually declare more or want to present themselves in a better uh, way, in a better uh, light than, uh, than uh, it, they actually do. But they uh, really declare that they try to keep healthy habits. Although the farmers, these people with top FOMO, uh, do it a bit uh, less often than uh, people with uh, low FOMO. It's not very it's not a huge disproportion, yes, but it's about 10%, but th there is a difference. Uh, they are more, um, uh, they more often uh, declare that they do not do uh, that. The, the, these uh, answers, no answers are not very, uh, were not very popular, but the former farmers, uh, declared they do not uh, keep healthy habits more the most often uh, among our respondents. Um, and uh, if they do, we, we then asked what, how do you keep these healthy habits? What are your um, activities? What are your, your decisions? Uh, what do you do to keep these healthy 
habits. And uh, as you can see, we have six different uh, possible answers and uh, people usually uh, declare that they care for my for their development offline. So they care to be offline and to do something for their um, development for their uh, well-being in general offline, but we don't know uh, any uh, details in this uh, area. Uh, they also said they, they care for their interpersonal relations online, that they control time, they control time also using a specific dedicated uh, time counting apps, which is on the, the very top of this uh, of this di diagram. Uh, and this, uh, as you can see, there is no clear uh, picture about uh, the farmers and their healthy habits because they answer in different ways uh, for this, uh, for this, uh, the, or they chose different answers for this question. Usually they care, declare that the, they declare their care for their uh, development offline, but also the, they most often de declared using time counting apps, which is uh, still being online, let's say. <laughs> Uh, and uh, learning about the digital well-being is also just learning, not uh, not executing their skills, for example. Uh, these were the questions about their the care for themselves, how they care for themselves. We also asked if they care for the others in terms of digital well-being, which is if they. Um, uh see that people have some problems with uh, excessive internet usage or uh, uh, and if they do something if uh, in such situation uh half by half let's say <laughs> that half uh, of our respondents uh, said that uh, they do and uh, another half almost half that they don't uh, and mostly uh, which is uh, interesting that these people who are not uh, so much at risk with FOMO uh, most more often declared that they don't uh, pointed out anybody because maybe because they have that they uh, didn't see such a problem in their lives so they also did not uh, see this problem in the lives of uh, other people. Maybe, but it is just a, another hypothesis to be uh, to be um, verified. Uh, what did you offer to a person whom you po pointed out due to his her or her unhealthy habits? The, the another um, question. Uh, related to the previous ones, and the list is al almost uh, the same uh, as for uh, caring for uh, them themselves. Yes, uh, do they uh, control time spending spend spent online, or do they um, care for for their time offline, and some something like that? Um, this, uh, I think, the most popular answer, uh, which is control of time spent online, uh, is also the most popular about the farmers, uh, among the farmers. But uh, it's, I think, we can we we should uh, think uh, or or just realize if it is. Um, if it, it is the, for example, the most, the easiest answer and the, the, the one which is the first uh, choice answer, let's say, uh, I hope you understand what I mean. Um, and again, the problem is the, about declaration, yes, that quantitative survey study um, bears this risk of, of declaration uh, and we should 
uh, verify this data, this data with some qualitative studies, which would be more uh, valuable for sure. Uh, so what can we say? Uh, how can we conclude? Uh, as you can see, I think, and our interpretation was that high FOMO people, the FOMERs, uh, we can say that they are information, ICT and media literate, literate people. I mean, most of them seems to have skills in information searching, in ICT, in information selection, um, in selection of uh, different types of activities, for example, yeah? They have uh, adequate knowledge, they have skills, they uh, have maybe much more experience than no uh, FOMO people or less FOMO people in uh, different uh, internet activities or social media activities. Uh, so information literacy is uh, at least in this uh, skills uh, aspect uh, is, uh, I cannot say positively correlated because I have not verified it uh, with a, in a statistical way, yes, but I can say that it's some, somehow related that the FOMO people are efficient in information activities and they have uh, some, at least some of uh, information competencies, information skills. And also they declare that they care for their that, and uh, information, uh, internet behaviors and uh, internet online behavior of other people. Uh, again, they declare or, they, or as I said before, they only declare their efforts in undertaking activities for their digital well-being, for, for taking care for their uh, digital well-being. Uh, in particular, controlling the time spent online. Although it is difficult to, co to control this time, and I think every one of us uh, knows that and experienced that uh, as a challenge. Uh, if knowledge and skills in information processing and dissemination are on a, let's say, quite high level or are okay, are enough, uh, then uh, we may th think or we may uh, ask a question uh, if knowledge and skills are enough or uh, should we, in other words, should we um, think about developing us, um, developing the, the, this third part of learning outcomes, which is, uh, I mean, uh, if we use this, uh, parallel to learning outcomes as we have at the uh, university education, yes? Uh, knowledge, uh, learning outcomes consisting of knowledge, skills and attitudes. Then we can also refer it to uh, information literacy and learning outcomes in knowledge and skills, let's say are quite okay, but we can or we should think about developing our attitudes because attitude and the personal um, awareness or consciousness seems to be the, the challenge uh, for uh, the high form of people, how to make constant decision, when to stop, when to withdraw, uh, when to limit and how to limit uh, our activities uh, in, uh, in, in the internet, in social uh, networks. Uh, we found the digital well-being as uh, if we well we define digital well-being as the awareness of this um, specific uh, design of the virtual sphere and digital culture. Um, again, uh, in this learning outcomes perspective and. Uh, focusing on the attitudes, uh, we can discuss the, the uh, positives or uh, advantages of developing uh, rather positive reinforcement, reinforcement techniques than controlling behavior or 
uh, just you know uh, limiting uh, or forbidding or closing or, or again limiting some behavior uh, which uh, can re ha have negative results because people don't like to be limited we should rather focus on positive uh, patterns of behavior and reinforcing these positive patterns uh, of behavior. Um, information literacy as the knowledge only and knowledge and skills do not guarantee protection against problematic internet use um, like FOMO and like other types of this problematic internet use. So this we can focus on while, for example, teaching information literacy, we can focus on uh, we, or we should focus on uh, also on attitudes, not only the knowledge and skills. This was the first part, the first two waves and the first couple of research questions we tried to answer. And the other was information overload. The scale for information load was uh, included in uh, the questionnaire in these two uh, last two waves. So we can find out uh, what is the information overload status of the Polish respondents. I think it can be quite parallel to, to the information overload situation in other European and non-European nations. And uh, how can we relate it to FOMO and to information literacy or to information literacy and to FOMO? <clears throat> uh, some background information, theoretical information. I uh, uh, offer you here two uh, information overload definitions. The very first one is uh, from the authors uh, of uh, library and information science background. So I think it's uh, they are uh, familiar to us. And uh, this is also uh, our uh, LIS specific perspective on information overload. Uh, and the other definition, uh, much more shorter, uh, is, uh, was offered by the authors of the scale. So I think it is also important to know how, how the information overload is defined for the scale we used and which was uh, originally used in 2012. Um, as I said, these two waves uh, took place in 2021 and 22. So obviously we have to refer to the context, which is pandemic, which is uh, the war in Ukraine and other social and political problematic situations we uh, have to uh, face, had to face in uh, two years and one year ago, uh, because definitely they influenced our information usage and our um, uh, psychophysiological also uh, well-being or lack of this well-being. This is the tool. Uh, I, I mean this part of our, uh, the, the tool for information overload, so information overload scale, a part of our longer uh, questionnaire and it was used uh, together with the FOMO scale and other once I realized that we you cannot uh, remember all these 15 items, me neither, <laughs> uh, but uh, just to, to sum up, they uh, focus mostly on the um, several aspects, uh, too much information, yes, too uh, overwhelming amount of information uh, and the, in the result, the, the feel of um, uh, problems with concentration, lack of concentration, we cannot con concentrate on doing things uh, when we have too many or too much information. And we have problems with making selection, evaluation and decision on what to choose and what not to choose. Uh, and we we are we feel very tired with this uh, amount of information. So these are the three uh, or four aspects uh, which are reflected if the, in these fifteen 
uh, items of this uh, scale. Again, uh, the, the methodology was the same, uh, online uh, survey uh, with the, in cooperation with the Ariadna panel on the representative sample of Polish internet users aged 15 and older. Uh, I will show you the, the results only only positive results uh, and recorded from the Likert scale, which was five elements into three elements. And the results uh, which we'll see here are uh, positive together for uh, agree and I strongly agree. And the results, uh, as you can see, um, according uh, for, for uh, each and every item, uh, we can see results for both waves. The uh, 21 is up, uh, 20 to 20, 2022 is the green one, which is below. Uh, what we found very interesting uh, is uh, that the, there is a kind of pattern. Yes, we if we repeat this uh, uh, this. Uh, survey, uh, definitely we should find the repetition of this pattern uh, because maybe we can think about kind of model uh, of our uh, respondents' uh, information overload, how they answer specific items, yes, individual items. Mostly uh, the general sample, the general the population, let's say, because the, the, the sample was representative, um, the answer are quite high. Yes, more than from more than 20 to almost 50 percent people, depending on the wave and depending on the item, uh, agreed that they feel somehow in different aspects uh, overhauled with the, the amount of information they have to uh, face and the the the, their reactions repeat uh, year by year. It's it's interesting. Uh, obviously, this is the general pattern for the whole sample. And now we can go um, uh, for some looking for some differences between different social groups. But uh, just one more. Uh, um, information, as you can see, Downwritten the top three results, which are for are the items four, eight, and eleven. They refer all to this overwhelming quantity of information and difficulties with selection. Information selection is of, of course one of these information skills and belongs to information literacy. Um, these are the results only for the last wave and the the different for genders, yes? Females are up, uh, yellow, and uh, male answers are uh, green below. So the first information is that uh, probably, uh, or at least in this one year, uh, women suffer more from information overload uh, than men. And the question uh, is, why and how, <laughs> uh, what is the difference? Um, if we uh, go back to the scale, we can see that uh, people suffer more in, in this, mostly in these items, three, four, eight, 11, and 12. Ah, ha, ha. Three, four, eight, 11, and 12. Oh, and uh, as far as I remember, uh, I, I will not uh, read it right now, but as far as I remember, they um, refer to concentration and problems with selection and this uh, feeling of being tired of so many things to do. So even if we have a kind of social stereotype that people, uh, that women are uh, people with this uh, multitasking skill, it seems that this amount of information is too much even for them, and uh, we cannot uh, we cannot manage manage um, 
so much information that there is a limit uh, for uh, for women men uh, the, the men's uh, most uh, highly uh, indicated items are uh, three of them are the same but on a not not as high as uh, for uh, for women. So there, this is the difference. First difference uh, in terms of uh, social demographic factors, and the other difference is among uh, age groups. Um, first, the youngest group, uh, the the yellow one, bright yellow one, uh, which, as you can see, even if we even though we have this repeated pattern of answers between years, we can see that uh, in 2022, again, in this last wave, uh, the youngest respondents uh, specifically high, uh, highly uh, agreed or specifically strongly agreed with uh, first six uh, items. And uh, as uh, for the, the rest of items, they are also a bit higher in many of them, not all of them, but uh, at least a few. So we can think or we can hypothesize that hypothesize that that uh, this specific group, 15 to 19 years old, uh, they are um, they, they they suffered mostly maybe from the the pandemic uh, circumstances, learning online, staying at home living online all day long, seven, 24 hours per seven days or something like that, uh, definitely we should go further with this research and find out why uh, are these intuitions or this data from other studies that this is the most suffered in, uh, suffering from the pandemic group. Um, say, uh, most psychologically su suffering group. Is it uh, the truth for these results, or uh, we can we should uh, look for other uh, reasons for of this situation? Um, the um, medium, let's say, age groups are very close to each other, uh, and the the other, which is Different is the the uh, old the the oldest group. I don't like this um, cafeteria because 55 plus is a very broad cafeteria. I think personally that it should be at least two or three more groups, but we have what we have. <laughs> uh, and, and you can see that this is the group with the lowest indicators. Yes, the, the lowest percentage results. Uh, for for uh, most of items, not all of them, but uh, most of items. And we can also, or we should also, try to find out why. Uh, maybe because they uh, are uh, not very engaged in this uh, virtual uh, life, in online uh, life, in social networking. But as I said, 55 plus is a very broad uh, cafeteria, very broad group. So. It includes people very active in work on a very often senior or high position as uh, in why why and in the other those who are retired uh, and who forgot <laughs> their work time and who live alone and so on and so on. so very very diversified uh, group and this can also influence the the results what about FOMO and uh, information overload. As you can see, um, the formal results uh, are uh, for information uh, overload are on this um, bright yellow uh, and green lines, which are much higher than the results for the total respondents in both waves, which is I think it shows us, it reveals us quite obviously that the problem with information overload has very much in common with uh, the problem of uh, FOMO. And the FOMERs, the high FOMO people, uh, 
I think suffer extremely uh, this uh, information overload problem and uh, it is the challenge for uh, education but of course not only education for very different groups uh, which are engaged in caring for our well-being not only digital well-being uh, in terms of discussion, as I said, we can think about the pandemic and the, the war in Ukraine as the, the um, circumstances that influence the, the level of information overload. Um, there were a couple of projects specifically dedicated to um, exploring uh, pandemic related information overload it was they used the specific uh, scales named covio scales uh, which were uh, developed on the basis of uh, information overload scales designed uh, developed uh, for um, surveying seriously ill uh, people, people with serious diseases, uh, who um, has have to uh, face a large amount of difficult information because of their uh, health status. Um, so our scale was, let's say, general one. Uh, and nevertheless, the general information overload scale somehow reveals and confirms the results of this uh, COVID dedicated scales that, yes, information overload related to the pandemic situation um, makes the problem bigger. Yes, that the information overload is a bigger problem than. Uh, if uh, we would not uh, experience this uh, this uh, pandemic, um, we well, as I said, we should think about uh, maybe modeling or uh, continuous uh, studying the information overload uh, phenomenon uh, in our population to find out if this pattern of reactions. Uh, repeats again and again and if we can try to, to think about uh, modeling this information overload situation uh, and uh, what else uh, the, the most difficult situation or the most difficult challenge we are dealing with uh, in terms of these uh, percentage indicators uh, is information redundancy. We have too much information and we cannot, uh, we are unable to select, to make a decision, to make a choice, and it influences significantly and negatively significantly our everyday uh, life. We cannot uh, prioritize prioritize correctly our tasks, we cannot concentrate, so we are less efficient in our everyday life, in our jobs, in our private lives, and we are less efficient. Uh, and so it, it definitely influences our uh, psychological status and our uh, well general well-being, digital well-being and uh, general uh, well-being. We have this specific results for the youngest respondents and for the oldest uh, respondents, which uh, requires further uh, studies, I think. And we have these differences between women and men, which is also the uh, point, uh, the, the, the issue of uh, further uh, studies, why and uh, it, the, this difference will be uh, repeated again or, uh, or not. Uh, information, uh, if information overload uh, is the reason for pro uh, of problems with selection, evaluation, and concentration, then it is definitely it definitely has something in common with information literacy. Uh, 
it seems that we still and again uh, need information literacy in information literacy trainings or improvement uh, or uh, ex uh, exercising our competencies, our skills, skills in this range. And we can also um, think uh, about uh, some recommendations. Uh, a few of them are, well, the same as before. We can only say that the results of this study support this the, the, the traditional, let's say, recommendation. But we have we can also think about adapting of training depending on uh, the needs of specific groups like the, the younger people or the older people or women versus men or something like that. And we can also think about um, our responsibilities as active participants of this online um, living, yes, uh, as prosumers. I mean, uh, I, I, what I have in mind is, uh, for example, uh, maybe today we do not uh, meet such a notice as often as a couple of years ago, but a couple of years ago, we often uh, received mails with the short note at the bottom, please do not, or please uh, rethink the necessity of printing this mail because of the trees and climate, yes? And now we can also think about such a disclosure or such a note uh, uh, in terms of um, sharing information in social networking. Well, social networking, uh, would not exist with our, without our activities, without us uh, and uh, without our sharing information. But uh, just rethink uh, uh, if uh, you really have to share or not, maybe because uh, there, are, there is so many information, there are so many information uh, all around in uh, real and virtual life that maybe it's not needed to add uh, again, uh, another item, another element. Final conclusions. Uh, uh, to sum up, uh, yes, this uh, results and the questions which uh, arise from these results. If we can say that high FOMO is related positive, positively with information literacy in terms of knowledge and skills specifically. And digital well-being as declared by our respondents, yes. Uh, and information overload. Uh, and if information overload may influence negatively information literacy or may also reveal lacking information skills, in terms specifically in sele uh, of selection and evaluation, then we can uh, be afraid uh, or we can try to um, discuss the problem that lower information literacy uh, leads to the higher risk of uh, fear of missing out and of information overload. And what is the rem remedium? What can we, how can we help? Is information literacy training the only? Uh, help or is it enough? What sh what else can we do? Uh, and we we can put more attention to uh, teaching not only uh, knowledge and skills but also attitudes. But still, is it enough? It's obviously an open question. <laughs> uh, we cannot, I think, uh, answer it uh, just at the very moment. But what can we do? Thank you very much.